All right, you want to stretch? <laughs> they make you sit through a lot. By the way, these slides are uh, mobile friendly. Uh, not that I want you to pull out your phones yet, but if you can remember vip.udel.edu slash ecex, you can follow along. Uh, <clears throat> OK, so I wanted to talk about our implementation of the VIP program, which Ed brought up in the earlier panel. Um, and you know, this is a, I watched 20 TEDx talks over the last 48 hours, something like that, right? And um, talking about my little VIP program is, is not actually it. I want to talk about the future of engineering education and about how we can kind of really change lives together here, us, in this room. Um, so, so let's do that. You already heard it's a vertically integrated project, so on. Uh, so what is it really like? We've got multidisciplinary teams of 10 to 20 kids centered around faculty research doing interesting things. They take it for one credit, maybe two credits a semester, uh, and they try to return. And we want this to sort of pepper in with their overall experience. So that's, that's the basic thing. Uh, all right, so in my youthful 20s, I read this book called The One Straw Revolution by a Japanese naturalist who, who thought systemically. And it opened with a sentence that always stuck in my head, that is, can this one seed of grain start a revolution? Uh, and I like that, so I stole that, right? Can this one credit hour course change the world? OK. And I'm, I'm an ambitious guy, right? Uh, this is just how I think. So, so what does it take to actually change the world? And what do you guys think it takes to change the world? It takes great people out there doing things that move the needle. You need paradigm shifters. You need innovators. You need inventors, we need more Teslas and Edisons and Jobs and, and all of these folks out there doing things that really matter, right? And they have to be efficient at it and effective and they've got to get through all the red tape and all the nonsense. Um, you know, I'm an education guy, right? I'm here to teach, I'm here to, to inspire the next generation and the question is can we actually teach greatness? Uh, is this something that you can transfer to kids? Can you mint uh, Teslas? All right, not the cars. Um, that's a hard question, and researchers actually tried to answer that a little bit. Uh, let's not start with whether or not we can teach it, but let's start with what does it take to actually be successful. Uh, so we've got Angela Duckworth as a uh, research psychologist, and you've probably read this book, maybe. Uh, uh, she's done study after study after study that shows grit is the number one indicator of success, grit being the ability to persevere the ability to be passionate and have a long-term goal that you see through. And you get knocked down, you pick yourself back up, uh, and you do that over and over and over again. Because life is hard, and life sucks when you're an adult sometimes, uh, and that's okay. 30% of your job will just not be that great. Um, do you have the resilience to get back up and do it? Uh, do you have the resilience to believe in yourself over and over and over again? Okay, um, can we teach that? I don't know, well, let's get there. Uh, emotional intelligence. A lot of studies are saying that what does it take to actually be a success? It's not IQ, right? Uh, Ed was saying it's not GPA that matters for these kids that actually go out there and change something. So we need emotional intelligence in our engineers of the future. How do we pull that off? Uh, I've always liked Earl Nightingale. He says the magic word is attitude. And I buy that, right? I want my kids to come out with a really healthy attitude. That's what I think it takes to be more Tesla-like. OK, and of course, we need technical expertise. We're good at that. We've been doing that for 125 years. We teach the, the actual technical skills you need, and we need to practice that over and over and over again. So the question is, are you born with this? Um, if I have one of these sharp kids, they're 10 years old, so on, uh, can I cultivate these things? All right, so the research there, I'll turn to Carol Dweck out of Stanford. Uh, she talks about mindset. And she puts the world into two different mindsets. You've either got a fixed mindset, or a growth mindset. Uh, and if you've got a fixed mindset, you think that your talent, your intelligence, are in your DNA. They're fixed in stone, so to speak. So I've got stone DNA, roughly. Uh, or you have a growth mindset popping out of this hard surface. Uh, in a growth mindset, you have the ability to throw more hours at it. You can spend more time. If you get an A on a test, it's because you spent enough hours. And if you fail the test, it's because you didn't spend enough hours. If you have a fixed mindset, what do you think? If you fail the test, maybe you kind of suck at that. Uh, I'm a mathematician. My PhD is math. Every time I say that at a party or anything like that, most of the time the reaction I hear is, I hate math, right? Um, uh, I suck at math. I hear that all the time. Um, these are signs of a fixed mindset. You get a good grade, they think you're smart. 
Uh, Carol Dweck is who I can thank for not praising my daughter's intelligence. Uh, we praise her effort, uh, and this is now in all the parenting. So she shows that you can actually learn a growth mindset. And if you have a growth mindset, the vast majority of successful people have a growth mindset. Uh, if you're out there and you've seen it, you believe that it is your effort and your hours that count. It puts you in the driver's seat of your life. All right, so I really want you, by, by the way, to, as an action step, consider whether or not you have a fixed mindset. And if you do, do not talk that way to your students or your children, please. Uh, encourage a growth mindset. I like this quote. This is uh, out of the Georgia Tech of the North, MIT. Uh, so that's a joke for Ed there. Um, <laughs> Our job is to create the conditions for invention rather than provide ready-made knowledge. Uh, our kids are not empty vessels to be filled by the sage on a stage, which is room sort of, you know, is sage on a stage-like. But in reality, we are now the guides on the side. Uh, now we need to get the kids in the place where they are tinkering around. If we're going to have Edisons and so on, they have to be tinkering and stumbling and tinkering and stumbling and so on. And if we want them to do great things, you are what you repeatedly do. You are what you think about that forms your world. So we need kids to do these things over and over. If we want to mint great engineers, we have to have them practicing great things week in and week out, over and over and over. OK, so I want to make the case that our VIP program does this. Um, you know, we're, we're looking for ways to build grit. And I think I see it. And I think I see this as a way to actually mint world-class engineers that can move the needle for humanity. And here's why. They can fail. The panel was talking about failures. Uh, all of my kids who were presenting yesterday have done iteration one, iteration two, iteration three, tried, 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 screw up the project management. Now we're bottlenecked and stuck behind a deadline, whatever it is. You learn, you learn, you learn. To do that in a safe place where it doesn't affect your GPA, it doesn't screw up your future or anything else like that is essential. I need to teach you that the failure is not you. It's just part of the process. You have to fail a thousand times to succeed. Uh, another thing is that it's based on research, cutting edge research that motivates the faculty's lives. That means that there's no expectation of success to some extent. You know, we hope that they do things, but we're, we have to reward effort. Because when it's cutting edge, nobody's done it before. And if nobody's done it before, how do you know it's going to work? Well, you don't. You just see how many hours did they throw at it. That incentivizes the grade to reward effort and not results. Again, teaching grit. Uh, you're practicing innovation. The other thing I think in this is that I want kids to think huge. I need them to be audacious in the way they set their goals and see that it's OK. Set it just beyond what's possible for you right now and then accomplish that. And then just beyond what's possible for you right now and accomplish that. And that becomes a lifelong pattern where they think bigger and bigger and bigger every single year. That's what it takes for us to mint more Edisons. Uh, and then it's with giant, diverse teams. You're working with marketing majors or business majors or MIS or finance or whatever it is. Uh, you're building those soft skills that matter to your success in the future. You're able to get consensus. You're able to make a persuasive pitch to the rest of your team that your idea is the one that needs to be implemented. Or you back down in the right times, and you play all the different roles that teams need to be successful. Uh, these are practice skills, and you just have to have kids doing this, and I want to do this in one credit course that peppers it through their life. And I've got 20 kids in my VIP team. How do we scale this? Well. VIP has been designed to scale. We have 24 universities around the world. We have 2,000 kids in it. Uh, this is a thing that I think if I you know, promote you guys and uh, recruit you into being my uh, disciples out there, we can spread this, right? And then we can, in fact, change the world by training gritty, effective, growth mindset engineers. That's what it takes. So please join me in that. Adjust your fixed mindset if you've got one. Switch to a growth mindset. If you don't buy me, that's fine. I have one gift for listening through this. You can go to vip.udel.edu slash books. Here are four free audiobooks for you. You can only get one, uh, but these are audible. We'll let you give out samples to friends. So here's links that you can go to. You can read Mindset, New Psychology by Carol Dweck, Grit by Angela Duckworth, Originals by Adam Grant, and The Magic of Thinking Big, uh, which, you know, these things have all got lots of good incentive for you to go out there and actually helped me change the world. Thank you very much for your time. Next up is one of my mentors, Dr. K.